About two weeks ago, my wife and I did a shrink-wrapped episode, and she asked me about emotional burden, a woman's emotional labor. Uh, and I was, I was way too dismissive uh, in my response to that, kind of cavalier. And I said, look, uh, you know, I think emotional burden's a real thing. You know, the best way to mediate that is to do a better job of communicating. Sort of figure out what your standards should be, where you want your standards to be, uh, and then ask your husband or partner to support you in that. Um, and people online were not happy with that response. Um, and I have more insight into that now. And so I thought for today's vlog, it would be helpful if I sort of walked you through uh, the arc of my thinking as it relates to emotional burden. Before you watch this video clip, I want to acknowledge that the conversation is very gendered. I made a lot of assumptions and used a lot of stereotypes. Not every relationship breaks down the way I described. Not every relationship is male-female. And in every relationship, roles are slightly different. So with that caveat, I hope this is helpful. Pop Psych, and here's why. It stands for Popular Psychology, and through YouTube, I will become popular, and I'll be a popular psychologist. I'm David Colarossi. No, it's Dr. David Colarossi. I have a master's degree in marriage and family therapy and a PhD in counseling psychology. You are such a genius. So you've probably seen this video online. It's been around for a while. It's a clip of a female lioness hunting wildebeest. And she goes up to the sort of the edge of the pack as the pack is running by, uh, and she is super indecisive. And there has been, uh, you know, hundreds of memes made about, a, you know, a woman's indecision. And this is what it's like uh, when you go to a restaurant with a woman that, you know, they can't figure out what they want to eat. Um, well, I used to use this clip as an example of emotional burden. I said, hey, look at this. This woman showed up, thought about eating, was ready to hunt, ready to support for the family, but never pulled the trigger. It's the male line who stepped up and actually executed. So who worked harder? Uh, who took on the real burden here? Was it the woman who was on the edge of uh, the hunt or the guy who actually went in and executed the kill? Uh, so I thought it was funny and I would joke around with my wife about it. Uh, she, <laughs> she didn't think it was very funny um, and I kind of dismissed it. The more I think about it, uh, the more I, I recognize that my approach to emotional burden or emotional labor um, really missed the point. And what it ended up doing is really silencing my wife around it. And I think, uh, I think that dynamic happens a lot in relationships where uh, one of us is too cavalier about the complaints of another. Um, and so then the conversation kind of shuts down around it. So emotional burden uh, used to be described as emotional labor. I think the, the two terms are pretty well uh, interchangeable. And it was originally used to describe the burden that a woman experienced at work. So if you think kind of back to the 80s, uh, women were treated a little bit differently. There was more harassment. There was more diminishing behaviors on part of their male uh, counterparts. Um, and so the females at work would have to put on a smiley face and be kind of okay with the fact that they're being harassed, right? So they're smiling despite the fact that they're feeling uncomfortable, smiling despite the fact uh, that there's inequity in the way that they're paid, that kind of behavior. And there is an inherent burden in me having to show one look to the world and then experiencing something very different. That is emotional labor. Over the years, that has been sort of translated to the burden a woman experiences at home, keeping a household together, planning for dinner, it's planning for shopping trips, it's scheduling, uh, you know, uh, play dates, it's setting up dentist appointments, it's that kind of behind the scenes work that's not recognized or supported. And you have to contrast that to the work of their male counterparts, traditionally male counterparts, um, where they may be working long hours, they're supporting the family, and there's a burden there, but that burden is financially incentivized. That burden is recognized by society. So it's treated differently. So there's more distress that comes with an emotional burden because it's not recognized or appreciated. So that's the idea. If you bring up the idea of emotional burden to a lot of men, including myself, they often question the disparity. Is there really a disparity in the amount of emotional work done by women versus men? Sure, I acknowledge that my wife does more in the way of planning for dinners and setting up play dates and doctor's appointments. 
you know, but I'm setting up 529 plans or paying taxes or, you know, figuring out how much it's going to cost to refloor our basement. There's work that I'm doing as well that's behind the scenes that's not paid for. Is there really that much of a disparity? So to get to the bottom of this, we have to look at three pieces of data. The first is, is there actually a difference in the amount of work done at home by traditional women versus traditional men? The data is very clear, overwhelming. Women are doing more work at home, no question. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, well, that's because men are lazy since they have women at home. Women are taking care of everything and men just default to passing on work. The reality is if you look at the behavior of single women versus single men, single women are still doing more work at home. They value, in general, they value taking care of a home more than the traditional guy. So we know the actual work done leans in favor of women. The next question is, what is the actual impact of an emotional burden? Like, are we actually talking about a real thing? Again, the data is very clear. Emotional burden leads to increased stress. The third question is, is there really a disparity in the amount of emotional burden experienced by men versus women? And this is where the data becomes really fuzzy. Because emotional burden or emotional labor is defined in so many different ways and it covers such a broad range of behavior or experience, it's really hard to measure. All of the research in this area is done through anecdotal research. It's qualitative. It's, it's a research going out and asking a woman, what do you experience or what do you think? Because the data is gray, because it hasn't been empirically validated, it's really easy for men to dismiss it. Yeah, 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 you experience an emotional burden setting up doctor's appointment, but I also experience an emotional burden paying the taxes or whatever it might be. It's equal, let's stop worrying about it. And we sort of just dismiss this. And you can debate till the cows come home about whether or not there's actually this emotional burden. So here's how I think about this. If you look at all of the media, the podcasts, the books, the YouTube videos, the research, if you look at all of that energy, you're hearing a very clear chorus of women saying, yes, we experience this emotional burden and it's a major problem. And at some point we have to decide, society has to decide, do we believe that or not? And historically I have defaulted to, no, I don't believe it. I think I experienced the same burden and I wish women would stop genderizing, I don't know if that's a word or not, but I wish women would stop genderizing emotional burden. We all experience emotional burden. Let's stop complaining about it. And then George Floyd died. I know it seems like it's out of nowhere, but it really changed my perspective. Here you had a man that was publicly executed. It changed the way the world thought about racial tension in the United States. It certainly changed my view of the black experience in America. Everybody, I've not, I have not heard a single person that disagreed about the extent to which that was an absolute travesty. And yet, if we look at the way our society has responded, there has been this huge divide. There's riots and protests, and people are shouting for Black Lives Matter. And then there's another contingent of our population that says, whoa, that's not what black experience is in America. And what has been shocking to me as I've watched this unfold is to see white people, folks that don't have experience being a person of color in America, step up and say, no, let me tell you what the black experience is in America. Let me tell you how the media has created this. Let me tell you what I think. And at a certain point, we have to go, well, how do you know as a white person what the experience is of a black person? At a certain point, we have to, I think, default to if you say it exists, if there, are, if there is this many people screaming that this exists, maybe we should pay attention to it. And so for some reason, I saw that clearly as it related to the racial tension or the social justice tension in our society, but I wasn't seeing it as it related to this whole idea of emotional labor or emotional burden. But if my response to black America is, yes, we need to listen, it should be the same to women. If women are saying there is an emotional burden and this is how we feel, then I think my response as a man needs to be, okay, I will listen. And to me, that's been the defining kind of shift. And so then the question is, what do I do differently? I don't think it's fair to simply say, 
I need to be running around the house trying to take up all of the emotional burden. I don't think it requires a frenetic response that's sort of not measured. I do think it means that I need to be communicating more with my wife about her emotional burden and trying to take that from her. I need to think about the work that's done and the work that's required to get things set up as being equal. So instead of thinking, I took the kids to the doctor so I did everything, I need to recognize that my wife did a lot of work getting that appointment set up, getting them out of school, all of that kind of stuff. I need to see them as equivalent and treat them as such. So I have always thought about it like our workload needs to be the same in the house. I believe in that kind of egalitarian system. I'm not saying I'm great at it, but I recognize that it should be that way. But I've sort of neglected all of the background work. So I'm saying, look, we both cook dinner this week equally, so we're equal. And she's going, well, but I did all the shopping, I planned the meals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in that way, it's not equal at all. So the first thing I need to do is recognize that emotional work or emotional labor is as taxing as the task execution piece of it. And the next piece, and I think this is really important, is we as a society and me as a husband need to be better about praising the emotional work. So the big differentiator between the tactical work done versus the emotional work ahead of time is that the tactical work gets praised. And this is traditionally the work done by men, right? Men will work long hours at their job and they get paid for it. If they aren't able to be home because they're working, society goes, oh, well, you're supporting the household. If they mow the lawn, if they paint the house, if they fix the fence, if they make dinner, all those things are very tangible and they receive praise from their partners and from society. But the woman who is doing the emotional side of it, if that's the dynamic in the household, she's not receiving any of that praise. And that makes it, I think, very, very, very taxing. I think it increases the sort of burnout. The other thing that I have thought a lot about in preparation for this vlog is that the work that is traditionally done by men happens once a week, once a month, maybe even once a year. It's a big event and everybody pays attention to it. The work that is traditionally considered emotional labor happens every single day. Every single day, you spend all day burning all these calories, setting up, keeping the household together, keeping the husband happy, keeping the kids happy, and then you go to bed and you wake up the next day and do it again without any recognition from anybody that you're working so hard. And so I think my job as a husband and I think our job as a society should be to recognize that that work has been done. So that's how my thinking has evolved on it. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I have uh, adjusted my view a bit. I hope that's helpful. Like and subscribe.